I hope you guys are all doing well and having a great day so far. If you are new to my channel, then please subscribe. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like this video for love and turn on your post notifications so you guys know when I do upload a new video. Judging by the filming of this video, I am obviously alive, which means I obviously made it through my procedure that I needed done last week. If you've been watching my videos, you guys know that I needed an endoscopy done, which is an outpatient procedure where they put you to sleep and put a little camera down inside your mouth and just kind of take a look around in your stomach. I have been suffering from um, just spitting up blood and just the lack of being able to really eat and everything. And so just they wanted to get me in ASAP because I was losing weight and just had just not had an appetite and stuff like that. And so I was scheduled for a 9 a.m. procedure this past Friday and I showed up an hour early as requested and I had fasted through the entire night. They say do not eat after midnight and so I didn't have anything which was really hard for me because I've gotten into the habit of bringing in a light snack before I go to sleep and I guess that's really not okay to do when you're having stomach issues and stuff. I just felt like I was starving at some point and I just needed something in my system by the time I went to bed. And so I just bring in um, something soft, like like a little bowl of mashed potatoes or something like that. And so that really killed me because I was starving, starving just like even though it was super early in the morning still, I um, I was still hungry. And so I even told the doctor that I may pass out <laughs> before you guys even put me to sleep because I'll be so hungry. But I get to the hospital and it's in the outpatient surgical center and I had Robbie bring me and him and the girls waited in the waiting room and I checked myself in and they took me into this room that's kind of like an emergency room department and they have a bunch of curtains and different sections of where everybody has like their individual rooms. There were a lot of other people there surprisingly. I just didn't know that it would be that busy for these types of procedures but apparently they do like 15 of these procedures a day. I found that kind of comfortable just because it was so routine but um, I got there and they gave me a nightgown to change into I had to change from the waist up and I got to keep my leggings on and they gave me some hospital socks that had the little pads on the bottom so if you walk around um, you don't slip or anything and then they brought me a very warm blanket and a male nurse came in and he just started asking me all these questions and they're pretty much like who's gonna be your ride for the day we are giving you a sedative so we need to know who's gonna be driving you around and so I gave him Robbie's information of course and then they just asked me um, you know allergy questions what medications you're taking how much do you weigh and just all that fun good stuff and then somebody came in to do an IV into my left arm and it was somebody that was training because it's a training hospital and so they had her come in and um, she ended up getting um, lots of blood everywhere from doing it and so that kind of freaked me out a little bit too because um, you guys know I was super nervous going into this outpatient procedure because I've had a just rough past of um, outpatient procedures and I didn't want a bad outcome for this because the last one I ended up in ICU and this one I came in and I was just super nervous and I was just trying not to be so scared about the entire situation but um, there's always like the what if you know like what if this doesn't happen and what if I don't make it out of this simple thing and the procedure itself was supposed to be super fast the nurse told me that they have been there for years and they've seen this procedure happen where um, some last about 30 seconds and he's seen some that like have lasted 45 minutes. And so that was, 
don't know, that was a little bit comforting, but I just didn't want to be like one of the 45 minute patients. <laughs> and so that was kind of scary, but I guess that's if you have like ongoing bleeding in your stomach, like active bleeding. And so if you guys don't know what the endoscopy does, it's um, they kind of put you to sleep or give you a really strong sedative to relax you. And they take you into the surgical room and they just, um, put a scope down into your mouth and into your stomach to look at any abnormalities and stuff like that and so I waited in the little waiting area in my little room um about an hour and they let Robbie and the girls come back and they even gave the girls um some coloring paper and crayons and stuff like that and I got to say bye to them which was really nice and hugs and kisses bye and then Robbie I just told him just to go home because I don't know how long that everything is going to take and the hospital would be calling him to come and pick me up when I was ready to leave and so the next thing I know I have my little cap on my little surgery cap and I was wheeled back into the room and I was starting to get kind of nervous because there was about four people there and one was the doctor and one was um, the other people was like the anesthesiologist and then other people just making me comfortable and the first thing they had me do was lay to my left side and they wrapped me up in really warm blankets and kind of tucked me in and then they hooked me up to oxygen um, in my nose just a little tube that brings oxygen in because that's your only form of really breathing in everything um, once you're in there. And then they put a mouth guard in my mouth and had it wrapped around my head. And so this is where I just don't bite down onto the scope or anything like that. And it kind of protects my teeth. And then um, I found it was very difficult to swallow with the mouth guard in and I even like took it off and was like how am I supposed to swallow with this I was kind of like freaking out and then they said um just practice for a few minutes before we start and then as I'm practicing doing this they started to give me the sedative and then the scope came and they just said relax and I decided to close my eyes while the scope went in and then I felt the scope kind of going down and I gagged a couple times and then they pulled it out and then I opened my eyes and the procedure was done and I guess the entire procedure just lasted two minutes and I was awake um, for the entire two minutes so I knew what was going on and then I was definitely drowsy <laughs> because then they started wheeling me out into the recovery room and then that's where I fell asleep and I only fell asleep for about 30 minutes and I woke up and I just remember seeing these two nurses and they were just, um, they were talking about a movie that was in theaters that they recently saw. And I just like sat up and I just chimed into their conversation. And I had no idea what they were talking about. I haven't been to the movies in so long. I don't know what movies are out right now or being released because I don't have cable. And I just chimed in and I was just like, yeah, I want to see that movie too. And was like talking to him like I had already seen the movie and stuff. It was very strange. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Definitely from the sedative stuff. And then as soon as she kind of saw I was awake, she left. And then I stood up out of my bed and I walked out and I opened my curtains more because it was in another room where um, I had a curtain in a little room of my own and some other nurse saw me and was like oh you're up you're awake and then she called Robbie to come and get me and then I just got dressed they didn't tell me anything I just got dressed nobody gave me um, instructions on what to do when I got home or anything like that they just gave me some paperwork that really didn't say anything just said what I had done that day and then I didn't get the lab results that day or just the results of the findings of whatever they found. I actually have to wait until like a couple more weeks until I have a follow-up appointment with my doctor to find out, which is kind of nerve-wracking. But um, for the rest of the day, it was a very, it was a pretty strong sedative. I honestly felt like I had three shots of like alcohol. It was kind of like a very like high feeling because right afterwards, um, I went. I think we went to like Walmart and a couple other stores. Yeah, we went to Walmart. See, 
I know that we went there and we were there. It's just all kind of like a fog. <laughs> so it's very strange. They say if you're given the sedative to really not um, make any big decisions. <laughs> and so it was so funny though because I got home and I really felt like I really wanted to be productive and I wanted to get stuff done. So I cleaned around the house and I didn't really rest too much. And I felt totally fine until... I felt the sedative wear off and then my throat started hurting pretty badly and like I could feel it when I was swallowing. It only like hurt on one side, which is very strange, but it was so weird. Like it just felt like I had, I was coming down with a cold or something or I'd like been throat chopped. <laughs> That's what it felt like, but that was like the worst of it and I was just so relieved that everything turned out fine and um, I of course was like just a worry little possum and I was just so scared and everything but I was just super happy when everything was done because I was just so relieved that it was just done and over with and and I was just looking forward to finally finding out what the heck has been wrong with me so that was my experience with an endoscopy